Here we go. All right, and with that, I'd like to welcome you all. I'm Mark Pinto here at Phoenixville Public Library, and welcome to our latest installment of Talking Baseball with Julian and Lou. Tonight, two of Phoenixville's pundits of our national pastime, Julian McCracken and Lou Beccaria, will take us out to the ball game once again, and uh, also give you folks with us tonight on Zoom the opportunity to join them in conversation about our Philadelphia Phillies and to show off some of your own baseball mem memorabilia. For those of you not familiar with Julian or Lou, let me tell you a little bit about them. Julian McCracken is a former general manager of the Reading Phillies and a member of the Reading Baseball Hall of Fame, who later worked for Pro Cards in Pottstown and Fleer Trading Cards in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. And Lou Beccaria is the former president and CEO of the Phoenixville Community Health Foundation and has played high school, college, and semi-pro baseball in Philadelphia. He's coached youth baseball and has written about baseball too. So Julian, Lou, welcome back and let's play ball. Okay, and remember Lou, Lou played with Reggie Jackson in Cheltenham. Taught him everything he knows. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks Mark. <clears throat> Let me just go through the um, uh, description of the, you know, what the, the theme of tonight's program is so that everybody's kind of on the same page here. For the past decade, Phillies fans have been left out in the cold during the warmth of playoff time. The ever faithful fans have been promised each year that a competitive uh, product would be produced by upper management, but to no avail. So it's time for these faithful fans to take matters into their own hands. And that's what we're going to do. <laughs> what, would the, what would the baseball fans do to change, change things and finally get the Phillies into the ever elusive playoffs in 2022? Let's play team owner and general manager and see what we can do. So um, does anybody have their own uh, strategy for uh, how, to, how to get us at least into the playoffs, if not the uh, World Series? Well, I think they began they began by not tendering contracts to two expensive players, right. Andrew McCutcheon and uh, Odubel. So that's uh, that's a good start. And I think if they take that money and give it to somebody like Chris Bryant, now we're talking. We have, that takes care of uh, your outfield problem. Yeah, the yeah. Pitching is another issue. They they have to go out and sign some pitching. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, well, it's going to take a lot of money to sign Brian for sure. Yeah, he's going to be twenty to twenty-five million a year, and he's going to want long term, maybe seven, eight years. Plus, he's only what? Uh, what is he? Twenty-seven, twenty-eight. So he's yeah, still same age. Up. Yeah, same age as uh, his buddy Harper. Yeah. What about uh, Nick right. Castellano, the Cincinnati Reds? He's a free agent too, isn't he? Yeah, I take him. <clears throat> if you can't get Brian, I take him. <clears throat> they need a I mean, bat. They need a right-handed bat to protect Harper. Yeah. How about the three outfielders from Atlanta? Yeah, those guys. Well, you don't want the one guy because he's gonna he's got the domestic yeah. issue. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Peterson. Peterson's okay. He's a good player. Soler is uh Soler is actually a free agent too. Yeah, yeah, yeah Soler, um Eddie Rosario. Rosario, yeah. yeah. yeah and maybe even uh, du Duval is, is, is Duval. Yeah, he's, a free, he's, a free, he's a free agent. I think the guy, the guy from Cincinnati that Lou brought up has got the kind of defense and glove out there in the outfield that will make you remember how, how bad Greg Lezinski was in the outfield. So <laughs> I don't know that we can afford to have any more, any more uh, uh, butchers in the field there. Well, I think if they were to sign him, he would play left field. And they would try and uh, – what's his name? Matt uh, Ver Verland, what's yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Move, move him to center field. He's a pretty good outfielder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, yeah. he looks like he could play a little bit. I'd say I he, think the Phillies have to. Uh, unfortunately, like always, are going to have to get lucky. And one of these guys that they brought up from their own system is going to have to produce something. Whether it's the third baseman or Kingery or uh, Mickey, even Mickey Moniak. I mean, they have to have somebody break through for any luck to happen for them. I agree. Uh, 
Mickey Morniak is on my uh, must go list. Must go. <laughs> That yeah. had to be one of the worst picks ever as number one in the entire I, draft. I don't think he's I don't think he's a must go, but I think he will get packaged in some kind of a deal. You know, yeah. I, I, I do think he will go. Somebody will say will look at him and say, we can do something with that kid. And well he looks, change, changes the scenery do help guys every once in a while. Yeah, for sure. He looks so bad at the plate though. I've, I've seen him in the minor. <laughs> And, and just seems like he's better. And he's been in the minors now for what, six years, five years? Yep. Still only 22 years old. Yeah, but he's getting worse, not getting better. No, I mean, he actually he was better this year than he was the previous three or four years. He tailed off at the end, but yeah, he was he did better. I don't know. He's, he's a tough one. He's a tough one. The guy I think can help them is Hazley. I still think yeah, Hazley's a player. <clears throat> Hazley is what in the world? What in the world was his problem this year? I don't know. Never hey, guys, really um, let me introduce myself, Peter Shirelli, with uh, my friend Kathleen Boyer, who uh, got me onto this, which is really great. Uh, it was a nice surprise. Um, yeah, some of the guys you're mentioning, Hazley, was that was that a, some sort of personal issue or mental issue or something? Why personal he checked out? You know, the way that things are going with some of these athletes now that are coming out with their uh, stress their, and anxiety, uh, their, their different mental um, situations, it probably could be that. Yeah. Because he was put he was put on like, um, I don't know, the restricted list or something for 30 days or 60 days or something. Right. Right. Uh, I, I believe from what I heard through the grapevine, he actually went home. He packed all his stuff up and went home for. That's, that's correct. He did. Yeah. That was really early in the season, too. That's the same thing that Lane Johnson just did with the Eagles. Right. He, yeah. For three weeks. Yeah. But looking at Hazley as a baseball player, I mean, he's, he's as defensively as good a center fielder as you're going to find. He's a really good defensive. I, I, I saw him play at Reading and I, I, I thought he was terrific. I, I, and, I, thought he, I thought he was terrific. I think he, I think he can play for the Phillies. I do. The guy that's the sad case is Kingry. I don't think you're going to see him again. Yeah, that is sad. Yeah, it's really yeah. sad. They, the Phillies ruined him. They really yeah. did. What they, they tried? Well, they tried to make him into yeah. They tried to make him into a player that he isn't. I mean, you know, he's trying. He's five feet ten, 185 pounds. He's trying to be. He's trying to hit home runs. That's that's not his game. And I saw him play at AAA. He was great. They gave him that money way too early. Yep. And that ruined him. There, there's some good infielders um, that are out there, you know, that, to, to be reasonable as far as um, paying for a guy. I'd love to see him get that guy from the Dodgers who always seems to, uh, he can play infield or outfield just about every position, Chris Taylor. Yeah. I oh, think God. you can get yeah. him for three years at a decent price. And gosh, if you look at what the, um, the kid who went from Oakland to Toronto this year on the one year deal, Marcus Simeon. Whoever would have thought that guy would hit, be hitting over 40 home runs in a season? No I'd one. I'd be happy to see him take Segura's place. Really? Yeah, I think Segura, I think Segura will be traded. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, he's you know, you he's he's at you're going to get more for him now than you would ever. I, I I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not I'm not touting. I like him, but I I, like I wouldn't that. be surprised if they traded him. Wow. I would trade Didi Gregorius before I trade him. He's a well, pretty Didi, soft yeah, the problem with Didi is you're not going to get anything for him. Yeah, good good luck trying to get anything. With Segura, you could probably get you could probably get a, maybe a starting pitcher for him. He's 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 a really good he's a good fielder and he hits. So, but who's going to take his place then at second base or short? Bring up Stott or uh, yes, yeah, somebody like that. I, tell you, I saw or I saw Stott. Stott I saw Stott seven or eight games in Reading this year. I didn't see anything at all to make me think he can play at the big league level. Not at all. I was, I was at Reading three times this year, okay. and he played two of the games. He had home runs in two of the games. I was there. Did he? Yeah. Wow. I well, saw him play in Lehigh Valley, Valley and he was good. Off nights, but he, he showed nothing when I was there. I don't think he has the range to be a shortstop. It looks like to no. me like he's the guy that's going to be playing second base if Segura moves on. Right. See, his, his, biggest, his biggest advocate is Bryce Harper. You know, because he he had 
he he lived with the Harper in spring training in Clearwater. Uh, yeah, they were high school together too, didn't they? Is that right? They the have, yeah. Well, Scott's younger. <clears throat> they went. They may, they may have gone to the same high school, but no. I saw him play at Triple A. He looked very good. But he played. I think he played. He did play shortstop that night. I think. And Maytom played second. Okay. Yeah. I there's, think, an, there's an interesting. Uh, what do you think about Maton sticking around? Oh, I think he will. I think he'll make the team. He's a good player. His brother's yeah, his pretty brother, good pitcher. His brother was good. Yeah. Now, would you interested? go out? Would you go after any of the pitchers that are out there? I think one of the. I think the big question you have to answer first is whether you're willing to stick with. Uh, Noel or not, whether you trust him. Oh, no. Aaron Noel's got to go. Yeah, I don't oh. trust him at all. Break your heart. <laughs> oh, no. poor, poor Kathleen. She doesn't like any, any of the things we've said. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with Kathleen. I agree that, with Kathleen. That's, I think an attorney. That's, an, that's the attorney speaking. You know? right. Okay. <laughs> he, he had a bad year. Pitchers have a bad I have a, yeah. my, my friend Ed Mullis, who played in the Philly system, he thinks he just had a bad year. No, no, he's had a couple of bad years, and at the end of, he can't. <laughs> well, that's a different issue. I mean, if you look at it, if you look over the entire, yeah, at the end of the season, he has a tendency. To, I don't know if he gets fatigued or something, but if you look at his numbers over his career, this was an anomaly this year. Uh, I don't think I don't. Agree. He also gives up too many home runs with two strikes on him, two yeah. outs and two strikes. And I was this year. I agree, Lou. I don't. I don't trust him, and you know. He was lights out opening day. He was lights out. After that, he went downhill. And after that, right. But a, you know, Wheeler followed him and Wheeler made the comment that we compete, you know, against within the organization. There's a competition within the organization. And I don't know if that got into Nola's head or whatever, but you're right. He wasn't the same the, the rest of the year. And look at the year that Wheeler had. Yeah. Is there any is there any chance Nola was hurt? I think it's possible, him? I guess. He didn't yeah, get back. Just to yeah, get there, back. there were so many times that it was like he is just not right. He is just not right. Lou, you're breaking up a little bit. <clears throat> uh, sorry about that. No, that's uh, all right. There you go. Can you hear me now? Better? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay, close to the uh, iPad here. Mr. D'Angelo, you mentioned Ed Molish a moment ago. I have to tell you that he was my high school English coach, uh, or English teacher, LaSalle. Are you a LaSalle guy, too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, when year did you graduate? 87. Oh, wait a minute. Was I there? No, that's I came in the fall of 87. Okay. I think that's right. No, I came in the fall of 86. So you're, you're in the class of 87. I was in the class of 87, yeah. Okay. Wasn't Parisi the baseball coach in 87? He was. Mr. Mullis was my, I believe he was the English teacher. That's what I meant. Okay. okay. Oh, that's right. You had it for English. Yeah. Were you, did you play baseball? I did not, no. Okay. But I was the moderator for baseball those years. Okay. And that Gene Shaw and those guys. I remember. Who played for the Phillies. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a piece of baseball uh, memorabilia. I wanted Gene's bats. <clears throat> Is it, isn't he uh, one of their scouts now? Not anymore. He got fired. Oh, he, oh. he, he was part of the... Uh, I think yes, I'm not sure not. who. Yeah, I think Glenn Tex, that crowd. He, he was one of the guys let go. When we had Dickie Knowles, when Lou had Dickie Knowles at um, hot stove. at the hot stove, I, I I asked Dickie if he knew Gene. He said, "Oh yeah, great guy," and he implied that something happened. He said he wasn't treated fairly, but he didn't go into any detail and that impress him. It wasn't was it Dickie Knowles our last uh, live hot stover event, Lou? Yeah. Yes. Oh, and by the way, since you brought that up, I've just finalized the uh, uh, arrangements with uh, Jim Salisbury, the uh, oh, great inquiry reporter, and uh, on television, uh, November thirtieth. So put that on your calendar, uh, starting at five thirty, and it's going to be at the Phoenixville Area Senior Center, uh, one fifty three Church Street in Phoenixville. <clears throat> I'll be sending out my normal. Uh, announcement and, and everything uh we're uh it'll be twenty dollars this year because uh, we want to give something to the senior center for graciously giving us the space 
uh, we were not able to go back to the Phoenixville Community Health Foundation uh, this year. So, um, of course, with $54 million, they didn't need a, a, a donation, but the senior center. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place. My wife works there, and she's the one who helped make get the arrangement for us. So uh, that's great. Yeah. It'll be a nice place to uh, to wash. There's there's plenty of parking, and uh, these hot stove events are really fun. Plus, he's an interesting guy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's if, there's any, if there's anybody on this Zoom call who is not a member uh, of the hot stove group, uh, I'll be happy to. Uh, add you to the mailing list. And if you just send your contact information to bbguy, G U Y, 1945 at outlook.com. It stands for baseball guy, 1945 at outlook.com. I'll be very happy to put you on the distribution for all the communications related to Hot Stove Baseball Group. Yeah. You didn't mention to them how exclusive this group is, Lou. <laughs> The dues and the initiation fees and all that. Yeah, the the the, uh, the money each night you go uh, does include food and, and drink. Yeah, yeah. We've does. had we've had some uh, had some good people. We've had Chris Wheeler. We've had um, well, like you said, Dickie Knowles. We had uh, Tyler uh, Kepner, who's the uh, the national baseball writer for the New York New York Times. Uh, had uh, Mike. Uh, McDougal, who was an all-star pitcher for the Atlanta Braves, um, a relief pitcher. He lives in Collegeville. Uh, Bill, Bill Cachetis, a, a well-known author who lives in Paoli, who's written, gosh, probably seven or eight really good baseball books. Yeah. And, yeah, Andre Thornton. Yeah, yeah, Andre. Yeah, yeah, thanks for bringing that one up. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, we've had some pretty neat uh, – we haven't had an umpire yet. We're having a difficult time getting an umpire. So if anybody has it in well, with an umpire, Joe West. Joe West well, is yeah, he's retired. Yeah, he, Joe's re he's retired now. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, yeah, he, he loves the Phillies so much. <laughs> <laughs> the guy you got to try and get is Alan Porter because he lives in Chest. He lives in Chestnut Hill. I did. Right. He, yeah. he turned you down. Yep. Oh, I didn't talk, yeah. but somebody else had a contact with him. And he wasn't interested. That happens, unfortunately. He, he's only one of two people to ever turn us down. The other was a guy who lives uh, here in Elverson or in Chester County, someplace, uh, through another contact. And he's the his name is was Ken Henderson, I think. And he replaced Willie Mays in center field for the for the, but uh, he wasn't interested. So. Otherwise, we haven't had a problem getting people. So what do you think? Uh, you, you think, and if uh, if we end up having baseball next year, if the if the owners and players can get uh, get along and, and come up with some type of uh, agreement, do you think uh, Universal DH is going to happen in two thousand twenty two? I do. Uh, I think it's a no brainer. Yeah, I think it's a slam dunk. <clears throat> you know, it's yeah. I like I like old style baseball, but it's silly to have two leagues playing by different rules. It's just silly. And also, time, I think it's time to get rid of that extra inning rule. It's interesting oh, they that they had they, they had that for all 162 games, and then as soon as the playoffs started, boom, they went without it. it. Um, now, did they did they keep the? Um, I did. I should have noticed this. Did they keep the uh, reliever rule going in the uh, in the playoffs and World Series? Think yeah, so. you, had to face, you had to face three guys. Yeah. Okay. With well, three uh, uh, designated hitter, I, I'm tired of seeing the pitchers come up and just flail at the ball. And, that fun. and they, when they come up with a, you know, guys on base, like a given out, there are only a very, very few guys that are really good hitters for pitchers. Uh, Eric Greinke was one. Uh, Steve Cartman was another, um, but very few. You could almost put name them on one hand. Yeah, Bob Gibson, Don Drysdale. I mean, all those guys were. Robin Roberts could hit. Yes. Yeah. So it's a good Warren one. Spahn, the yeah. old timers could hit. But you know, it's a fun. Lou brought up that you know, you just watch them try and bunt. They're the only ones required to bunt, and they can't do it either. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, there were, there were a number of instances I've read <laughs> reports where Drysdale was brought off the bench as a pinch hitter. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, sure. if, I had, if I had my way, I would uh, I would uh, do away with interleague play if I had my way too. Don't like that either. I'd, yeah. I'd like to have a true World Series. Yep. Where the teams don't play each other. And the All Star Game would mean something because they would dislike each other. Yeah. You know, yeah. there would be. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I agree. Yeah. But it, it's. I got a survey from the Phillies this week. Did you? you know, okay. About uh, what do you, I don't know if you anybody else got. Yeah, that? I, I got that yeah. too. Yeah, I got and that. One, one of the things I said, and I've said it every year when I get the survey, is the ballpark is too loud. You can't hear yourself think. I, if when the time comes when I stop going to games, that will be why. It's just too loud. Well, they, they have to do away with that uh, walk-up music for every player. That's oh, my God. Yeah. But they're trying to appeal to, you know, younger people with that. 14-year-olds who play yeah. video games. <laughs> well, they're the future, right? Yeah, you're if right. If they cared about the future, they'd have day baseball. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. They don't care about the future. They only care about the bottom line. Yeah. Go put put plugs in your ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's an article in uh, watching the play yesterday's inquire about the World Series games being longer than ever. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's that's ridiculous. They say uh, nine inning games. Just this is aside from the World Series, nine inning games averaged a record three hours and ten minutes during the regular season, up from three to three hours and seven minutes last year. Then they, they remarked in 1991, the average game was two two hours and 49 minutes. And in 1981, it was two hours and 33 minutes. Huh. Yeah, I, I still say that the, that, the, that the players and the umpires are solely responsible for the length of the game. I mean, the players are the ones that are fiddling around at every at-bat or walking around the mound. The umpire just has to implement the rules and force them to play the game. I mean, if you go back, you know, you talked about day baseball. If you go back to the 40s and the 50s, umpires were there not only to call the game, but they were there to set the pace of the game. They, they couldn't play when it got dark. If the sun yep. went down, they had to suspend the game. Right. So the umpire's job was to keep the game moving. Now with the lights and you know, the idea that they let these guys get out of the batter's box after every pitch is just crazy. Yeah. All you yeah. have to do is point to the pitcher and say, throw the ball, and boom, the game keeps moving. Yeah, and, and no one player has the guts to do it. That's all true. The, another factor is that the pitchers can't pitch; they don't throw strikes. They just they're they're taught from time. day one to just throw as hard as you can. Not, everybody wants velo instead of control. Yeah, you know, those, so, those terms they they, they have to take those turn all those new terms and just flush them down the toilet. Yeah, you know you have a you have a guy like Alvarado that pitches for the Phillies. The guy can throw 100 miles an hour. He can't throw a strike. No. He was a little better at the end of the season, but you know, major league hit major league hitters are not impressed with 100 miles an hour. And the umpires, the umpires need to call the strike zone. Yes. You know, either use that box or find a way. You've got to call the strike zone the way it's it's written in the rule book, and not have consecutive pitches in the same place. One's called the ball. One's called the strike. Yeah. You know, I'll give they, you I'll give you another idea to speed the game up. What I would say is that you you can't start the top of an inning after three hours, no matter what you know, no, tied, no matter what. Then the game is suspended. There's not a major league player out there that wants a suspended game over his head. They want to get these games done. Right. So if there is incentive to get them done, the players would play faster. Imagine okay. you know, imagine the Phillies having a getaway and then having to go out to LA to finish the two innings of a game somewhere along the line. <laughs> no player wants that. They get those games done in three hours, no matter what, if you set a rule like that. Right. Yep. Good idea. Yep. Good idea. Hey, Mike. So a couple of Phillies we haven't mentioned about whether they stay or go you know, as, as we uh, put together a new team here. Roman gave, uh, Roman Quinn. Love him, but he needs to go. He, he's a walking injury you. factory. I love Roman Quinn. <laughs> I like him too. He's, he's exciting when he's healthy. He's great yeah, when he's healthy. healthy. He can't he can't go two weeks without getting injured. I yeah. mean, the kid the kid was great when he first came up and through the minor league system. He was so much fun to watch. But boy, he would come up with the, the most incredible leg injuries you'd ever heard of, and fingers and toes. And you, you know he's a, he's a year older than Bryce Harper. Yeah. Is that right? Wow. He's twenty nine years old. Like, 
he needs to change the scenery. Maybe, you know, I, I, I wish him well. I really like him. Yeah. But, nah. Yeah. yeah. He, kind of, he kind of reminds me of Ben Revere. Remember him? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Run yeah. like a deer, but oh, he was always getting hurt, too. Ben was a better better hitter, though. He, he hit for average, at least. Yeah. 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 Who was the guy that the, the Phillies brought up mostly? I guess he had played most of the year riding toward at the end of the year, and he, he had some good at bats in the outfield and infield. Um, Williams? No, no, it was another Bur Burline. guy. Burline. Yes. I think. Yeah, he's a player. I think right. I like him. He's a good not... Yeah, he's good. How about Travis Jankowski from Lancaster County? Needs a haircut. <laughs> yeah he's a he's a he's a bench player period he, he's he's a total bench player and he needs a beer cut beard cut <laughs> i tell you what if, if 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 i were commissioner of baseball i'd make all the players adhere to the new york yankee style of uh haircuts yeah. Yeah. with the players association <laughs> yeah. yeah well some somehow the yankees get away with it and uh and everybody That's adheres good. to it or they, they win and they york. pay <laughs> How about the Cam Bedrosian? Who? Oh, Bedrosian. Cam Bedrosian? No. No, no he's he probably not going to be with them. He doesn't no, have it in the bloodlines. No, he's not a major league player. Um, you know, he's – I think he's there because of his dad. Yeah. Uh, Matt Moore. Oh, God. Oh, uh, bye. <laughs> Goodbye, Matt. Adios. You know, my son pointed out something interesting about Matt Moore. He, he's got his fastball up to 95, 96. My son said, yeah, but it's straight. It's straight. Those, those, those players just eat that, that pitch up. You know, there aren't many left-handed pitchers who throw a straight ball, but he does. He does. No, sorry, Matt. The great guy. He needs to go. All right. Who's next, Lou? Raphael Marchand. He's trade bait. Right? I think he's yeah. trade bait. Yeah, that's the catcher. Yeah. Oh. catcher. I think I Rafael Marchand is great trade. So bait. do I. Yeah, you know he's yep. he's he, he he's a great uh, pitcher when it comes to calling a game. Not much of an offensive threat, but I think he's great trade bait. But yes. can they get somebody decent in return? I mean, you know, you look at what Atlanta did um, with Solaire, for example. So yeah. Larry's not going to be with Atlanta next year. He'll be gone. Duval but too. Yeah. He did what he had to do. Well, I maybe, Marshall, like I Marshall, maybe guys like Marshawn and Quinn and uh, Andrew Knapp, which is another name I was going to bring up, maybe they can bring at least some draft choices. You need a backup catcher, Lou. You still have to have a backup. Yeah. And Knapp yeah. does that pretty well. And that's well, probably yeah, not. But who, who, who do you think other than them? would be a good um, backup catcher who's, yeah. you know, around the league who might. Uh... The guy they used to have, Travis Darno. Yeah. Well, oh. Yeah. Yeah. To think that they drafted that kid. Yeah. They traded him, they, but they traded him for Roy Halliday. He was in that trade. He was in that deal. Right. Yep. Yeah. Well, that was okay. No, yeah. I mean, I, I would keep Andrew now. Um, yeah. He doesn't hit, but he, you know, I saw him play in the minors and he was a really good hitter. Yeah, I just was. think he doesn't play enough to, to hit. Would you uh, would you entertain the thoughts of uh, signing a Kyle Schwarber since he's outfield and first base? If you have the DH, yes. If you have, he, the, he's not I, a good fielder. I totally agree. If you have the DH, sign Carl, Kyle Schwarber. Uh, well, but he's that, looking that, for a big contract. Uh, when he gets on a on a roll, like he did this year with yeah. the Nationals. He, he couldn't get out for like two or three weeks. He wasn't yeah. out. But he, he is not a defensive player. No. No offense. I, let's face it, the Phillies can't afford another guy that can't catch the ball. Yeah, they don't need another Luzinski. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Phillies need some major defense. Well, there's, there, there are a lot of good shortstops out there, free agents, but are they willing to spend the money? Well, that's the other thing they might do is they might – Try and sign a shortstop and let DD be a DH. Because you've got Correa. Correa is going to take big bucks. Corey Sager is going to take big bucks. Simeon can play shortstop or second. 
Javier uh, Baez can play both shortstop and second. Trevor Story. And they've got there's some good names out there. Yeah, uh, Brendan Story wants to stay where he is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why wouldn't he? So what does every what does everybody think of uh, uh, Ronald Torres? Stay full time yeah. player. Player. Yeah. Great guy in the clubhouse. Can yeah. play anywhere you want. I agree. Yeah. I, I keep him. Yeah. I'm, he's, I'm like a leprechaun. he's like a leprechaun. Yeah, but he <laughs> he wouldn't be an everyday player. No. no. Of course not. I mean he's he's a guy off the bench. I mean he's terrific. He was terrific. I think you keep him. He is the right hander, and Brad Miller is the left hander. Oh yeah, off the bench. Yeah, I would you keep know, Brad and, Miller. And, and I, you know and what? I, the, you know what Brad Miller does that nobody else does in the big leagues. No batting gloves. Uh, yeah. One, one, one of the other guys. One of the guys for Houston. Oh, was the that guy right? from, Houston. Guys from Houston? The outfielder. Yeah. Yeah. Right field, right fielder, I think. Oh, yeah. Tucker. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a couple of guys. There aren't many, but there are a handful because you notice them immediately when they come into batter's box. And they they've no got to do away those doggone oven bits that those guys wear on the bases. That yeah, drives me nuts. That, yeah. Yeah. Keep, keep those in the kitchen. Get, <laughs> what, what's the point? Is it is the point of that to give them a few extra inches sliding into the base? Or? Now, uh, it originally started as um, a couple of guys had hand injuries or thumb Protection. injuries. Yeah. yeah. I can't see it unless it's got something hard in it. I don't see how that protects your hand. Yeah, because a spike will a spike will take care yeah. of that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I it's Teflon. The, the first the first time I saw it in use was in the Park and in, in Pittsburgh, I was at a game and I was like, "What does that guy have on his hand?" And they said, "Ah, oh, that's the oven mitt." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> Well, yeah, this that, is the hot stove, you know. Yeah. The, oh, there you go. That'll be a giveaway next year. The Phillies will have an oven bit giveaway with Harper's picture on it. There you go. <laughs> They're working on that right now, Julian. <laughs> yeah. Brought brought to you by uh, some uh, some stove company. Have, have all you have all you guys been to that PNC Park? I mean, I've been there a couple of times. That's really one of the nicest ballparks. Oh, it's it's beautiful to see those bridges. It is. It is yeah, beautiful. Bridges in the skyline. Yeah, I've never been there. Oh, it's all right. Oh, do it's yourself great. a favor, Joe. Joe, what you should do is uh, get one of the hotels across the river, and you can you can take a a, a, a little taxi, water taxi. About Twenty people can get on there, a water taxi to go across the river to the ballpark, and then go back the same way. There's nothing like taking a boat to see a ball game. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been to the park. I just have, I haven't taken the taxi like you talked about, but the park's it's, pretty. Uh, it's it's a great place well, to watch. The, the other thing, uh, nice daughter, I'm sorry. During, um, during uh, game nights, they actually close the Clemente Bridge to traffic. Yeah, so yeah they, walk, and they walk. Walk over. So not only is it wonderful, but it's safe. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The bridge is <laughs> it's, it's, it's worth driving to Pittsburgh for. It's a shame you have to go to Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, our daughter, our, daughter graduated, <laughs> our daughter graduated from the University of Pittsburgh. And I think it was the year. I think the park opened the year she graduated. And when we went out for graduating graduation weekend, I wanted to go to that park. For some reason, the rest of the family didn't think that was such a good idea. Oh, <laughs> go by yourself. Totally yeah. But I did get my picture taken next to the old outfield wall from uh, and if you uh from the old if you, if, you, if you want to see their minor league team, stop on the way out there in Altoona. Altoona. That's right, Altoona Wave. The Altoona the curve. curve. Have a great oh, curve. 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 Yeah. Yeah, up well, there. Park. If you're a big rail railroad buff, there's a great railroad museum there too. Yeah, I like railroads. There you go. Let's check that out. Make a weekend of it. Yeah. <laughs> See our right. own state. Now, Here's what do you think a, about some of the pit? There's a lot of there's a lot of good starting pitchers available. I've got a list here. You know, Stroman, Robbie Ray, Kevin Gossman, Scherzer, Carlos Rodon. Syndergaard's coming off of injury. Kershaw is always coming off an injury. <laughs> um, Steven Matz, Alex Cobb, Granky. There, there's some decent names out there. Of that group, of, I'd go for Matz. Matz? Yeah, I would. He pitched, didn't he, in the, he, he pitched in Toronto this year, didn't he? He did. Yeah. Galsman's going to de demand a lot of money. And he's over 30. I don't know. Most of those pitchers are over 30. Yeah. And, and you yeah. know. Mad Max is 
So you know the 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 Oakland A's are a team that can never afford to pay their players. They're probably the poorest team. Now you know all the story about the money ball, but they're probably still the poorest team out there. They have four players this year that are one year away from free agency. That the third baseman and the first baseman. The and they have up. two starting pitchers whose names I can't remember. They're both 27. And so they have four players that are turning free agents next year. They seem like a team to me that the Phillies had any minor league prospects at all, which they don't appear to have. The <laughs> A's will be right. The A's will be ripe for picking for some of these guys that are ready to turn free agents. Hmm. Imagine putting that Chapman at third base or, or something like that. You know. Yeah. yeah, they might have to give up somebody like Bone to get some of those guys, though. I'd give them up. I'd give them up. Yeah, sure. I'd give them up in a heartbeat. Really? But, oh yeah. I think I think he's another him. one of the failed <laughs> uh, choices by the the last regime. And you know, you might, you, I'm not a big Dave Dombrowski guy. But, you know, I think Dave Dombrowski comes in. He just rapes whatever he has to do to win now, and then he moves on. But um, yeah, I don't think Bohm. I think Bum's a head case. Really? Hey, Kathy, that's just my opinion. Uh, <laughs> he, needs I, hair, he, he needs a haircut. Uh, Kathleen, they, these guys, they don't like uh, players with long hair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like you know. It needs some seasoning. But yeah, you know, the, he got he, he, the second time around the league this year, he was just, the word got around. He, yeah. And, and, yeah. I think it's I think it's still too early to, to say for him. I think if you see you see the in the first half of this season, what you saw all of last season, then I think mm -hmm. you know, yeah. he you know, I don't think there's a big enough sample size. I mean, he's he he to me is almost like Mackie Sasser. Can't throw the ball back to the pitcher. Wow. <laughs> and you know, he's gonna fumble, he's just gonna fumble. <clears throat> So basically, no brainer plays. I mean, who was yeah, the I'm not sure he's a third baseman, but they got they got so many going from the Twins to the Yankees at second base. It just fell apart. Knobloch, 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 and Steve Sachs did too. Chuck Sachs. Yeah, Sachs. Yeah. Hey, I got a trivia question here. So we'll switch gears for a second. Name the single season record holder for hits by a shortstop. And the choices are A, Honus Wagner, B, Michael Young, C, Derek Jeter, or D, Gary Templeton. I'd say Michael Young. You said singles? Yeah. Michael yeah, Young. I'd say Michael Young. Michael yeah, Michael Young was a hitter. That is I was going to say Jeter. Yeah. No. Uh, very good. Uh, no, the no, Michael Young. Young. Michael Young Michael, was a great hitter. Collected uh, Michael Young collected at the shortstop collected 221 hits in 2005, leading wow. the major. Amazingly, it was his third of five consecutive seasons with 200 or more hits. Wow. Young also led the junior circuit in batting that year with a 331 mark. Jeter led both leagues in 2012, lashing 216 hits at the age of 38. Gary Templeton, playing for the Cardinals, posted a league best 211 hits in 1979. So, Michael Young. The Phillies traded for Young, and then he went up hitting about 244 or something like that, didn't he? Yeah, but, but Michael Young was at the end of his career. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah he was at the very end. And, yeah. and he had already announced that, you know, if you're going to trade me, you know, screw you, I'm going to come back. And Although I have to say, I met Michael Young when he was with the Phillies. A nicer guy you would never want to meet. Just a terrific guy. But he's an intense player. And it's the Phillies curse when a player comes to Philadelphia. Look what happened to Charlie Morton his first month in Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Julian, I was hoping you wouldn't say that. out the rest of the year. Yeah. Or yeah, Torrey. Michael was at the end of his career. All right, here's a question. Does – this might draw some controversy. Does Bryce Harper deserve to be the MVP this year? Yep. Yes. Yeah, I, I, just because there's nobody else out there. Words were gonna, Julian, words were going to come out of my mouth. Who else is there? Tatis. Right. Yeah, yeah I mean, he, he, he lost it for like a month and a half towards the end of the year when they needed him. And look, at, 
Some of that was due to injury. Harper had nobody hitting behind him. Yeah. He had no protection in the lineup at all, really. I, I just think he had, and they he, they couldn't get anybody on base for him to drive him in. So, so they pitched around him. Yes, they pitched around him. I you know I think uh, I think he, and he played a good outfield too. Yeah, and he actually hustled. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's Chase Utley in the outfield. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Harper. Yeah, I think yeah. it'll be uh, yeah. I think it'll be Guerrero in the in the uh, American League. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. Well, well, back to the MVP. What about the third baseman for the Braves, Austin Riley? Oh, Austin Riley, he's a great player. He's good. Yeah. I think he'll be in the top. He could be in the top three or four. He yeah. came on late. He came on a little later in the season. He had a lot more protection. You know, I looked at that Braves sure. lineup. They they are better than the Phillies at every position, every position. except right field, which is yeah. a tie, and catcher. What about Freddie Freeman as a MVP candidate? Uh, he was MVP last year. year. He, he was he, MVP last year, and he's not an MVP this year. He's great a great player. player. Yep. Yeah, oh, great player. Great I love the guy. Yeah, yeah, I like him too. Brave. You know, he's he's a free agent too. Yes, yeah, he, he is. is. The only reason I would watch Atlanta in the World Series was to watch Freddie Freeman and Solaire. That's it. I just don't like those guys. Uh, I like Albies. I like him. I think he's a good player. Yeah, Albies a great player. Spencer. And and there there was one thing that I noticed in, in the last game of the World Series that finally made me happy about the uniforms. Both teams wore what you're supposed to wear on the road and on the, and at home for the last game for what turned out to be the last game. Atlanta wore white, and Houston wore gray. You know, no more of these red. You know, the the red, the blues. You know, all they're doing trying to do is sell uniforms, and, and they right. do a pretty good job of it. But I was just Happy to see traditional gray and white uniforms like you're supposed to wear at home and road. They should they should have to wear wool uniforms like we used to have to wear. <laughs> <laughs> and no batting helmets, Lou. And no no batting, batting. Just just the helmet yeah, inserts, Lou. Yeah. Like Tony yeah, Taylor you, used to wear. you know what, Lou? That kept your weight down. So you know. Yeah. There you go. You know like that, the, games they, the games they played in Atlanta, they could have used those wool uniforms. <laughs> yeah. Well, was... you, you guys were making fun of the oven mitts earlier. The, another thing I would do is get these players to stop wearing this body armor to home plate. Yes. Then you wouldn't have batters standing right on top of the home plate and the pitcher's afraid to throw anywhere. You know, you know, yeah. You, well, you put it? these guys up there with just a helmet on and nothing else, and they're not going to stand on top of home plate for, you know, taking any hit. You know, don't back that? off, and then you'll get some strikeouts, and you'll get, you'll get some people swinging when they back off the plate, too. Well, that, that was that was Barry Bonds that started that. Oh yeah, that's, yeah you're right. That's the Barry Bonds effect. It's it's that too bad that uh, these guys didn't have to face Drysdale and uh, Gibson. No, they would knock them down. I mean, you or got guys war, going. Up, or you got guys going up to the plate. That, yeah, I'm sorry. Some of these Warren guys walk Spahn, to the plate. They look like they're hockey goalies. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Warren Spahn would have drilled those guys. Do you remember the other thing is on the subject of uniforms? Can we get rid of the pajama pants? What 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 is that? Like <laughs> that's not the you mentioned Brad Miller. He wears like he wears sanitaries and uh, stirrups. He looks like a ball player. You know? Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. was the guy from the Cardinals that started that with with the uh, with the uh, pants down to his ankles? Uh, what was the guy's name? He's an outfielder for the Cardinals. I guess in the oh, early eighties. Um, um, I know who you mean. Was it Mark Whitten? No, 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 it wasn't. No. Wasn't Mark Witt. It was somebody else. Um, I know who you mean. Yeah, it, it, it was a right-handed hitter, and yep. it, when he was asked about that, he said he wanted to make the strike zone so a little more difficult for the umpire to call. Well, hmm. I don't know how that works, but it, maybe his knees didn't bend or something. I well, I, I'm not going to stand up and show you my pajama bottoms, but. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think he just came up with the good idea for uh, defining the strike zone. The players should wear uniforms with horizontal lines across the knees and across the the chest, across the armpits. Yeah, there you go. Wow, that's a great idea. Hey, you take take away that Nike swoosh. Yeah, but it'll, it'll put a line across the uh, St. Louis Cardinals logo. Yeah, it's a cool logo. I have a friend that thinks that. That the Phillies road uniform should say Philadelphia. 
They oh, should. Yeah. I, I did a, and Lou, Lou and Mike know this, I did a study of all the major league teams and the Phillies are the only team who have never worn their true city name on their road uniform. They had P-H-I-L-A at one point. Yes. Right. With abbreviation, yes. but never the whole. Wow. But they were in San Francisco. They were in, they were in transition for a yeah. new uniform or something when I had that P-H-I-L-A. Is that when they wore the black? Uh, it was black. I think, where... yeah, I, you know, it's not too terribly long ago, right? I... And St. Louis is finally, they finally do have a uniform that says St. Louis. St. Louis, yeah. But they don't necessarily wear it on the road. They wear it, uh, I think, for Sunday home games. I think it's an alternate, yeah, it's an alternate top. Right. An alternate top. Speaking of uniforms, I understand the uniforms that just have a, a single letter. <clears throat> that there's no name on it, <clears throat> the nickname or the city name. It's like the like the Cubs. They just have a a C. C. A C. A C. Yeah. It's, it's and the A's the same thing. Yeah, just, well, the A's are the A's. <laughs> and there are, there are some teams who well the Yankees don't wear their name on the back of either home or away. Mm -hmm. um, I think the there's uh, like the Red Sox and the right. Giants don't but wear their don't. names on their home uniforms, but they wear them on their away uniforms. Correct. So the Yankees are still the only ones who never wear names on either home or the free uniforms. San Francisco actually spelled out the name yeah. of the city on their uniforms yeah. for a while. Yeah. Now I think right. it just says SF. Thing. And it was neat when Baltimore, you know, Baltimore has always had the curse of Baltimore, which is cool, and Los Angeles with the Dodgers. You know, it's, those are good old traditional uniforms. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Um, was, it, was it George Hendrick? Who George Hendrick. Hendrick, that's it. I thought it was George Hendrick, yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's who it was. George yep. Hendrick. Because he was known, he was known to his, his uh, teammates as Kunta Kinte. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I I only know that because I rode, I, I rode on an, uh, an airplane with the St. Louis Cardinals after they'd been swept by the Cubs uh, coming home from my grandmother's funeral. And um, I ended up sitting next to George Hendrick on the floor. Uh. <laughs> oh, how about that? And it was just, it was epic. <laughs> well, that, might, that, might, that, that was probably back in the days when you could still smoke on an airplane, too. <laughs> um, that part I don't know, Julian, but um, <laughs> the guys from the Cardinals, you'd have thought they'd won the World Series. Really? Oh, yeah. And Kunta Kinte kept ordering something that was alcoholic sure now let me ask you what do you folks think about the the, the one game wild card playoff i don't like that either uh, no no would you rather have that two out of three yeah because that's you know you play the whole year for for a one game playoff yeah. oh man yeah. that hurts yeah it I'm is exciting not, not, it is exciting but this not, but you know this the other thing we haven't talked about tonight is the uh this trend of these doggone bullpen games. Oh. That is just, you know, I mean, the, only, the main reason Atlanta won is because they had starters ready for game six and seven and Houston didn't. And yeah. this thing that Tampa Bay started, wait, you know, a few years ago, these guys coming, you know, pitching two innings and then one inning, then two innings. I, I, I don't, I don't understand why they actually designate a bullpen game. I, I don't, is that to say? Because I don't have a fifth together? starter. Because they don't have a fifth yeah, starter. Yeah. They don't know how to develop yeah. players anymore. They're they're afraid. These analytic idiots are afraid that a guy goes around the lineup a third time. Yeah. 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 And around them. What happened to the pitchers in the 50s, 60s, and 70s and, and 80s? They weren't afraid. They went through a lineup and they knew how to pitch. Yeah. Three, four times. But nowadays you've got these these you know, these guys are making so much money. They're ending up, you know, a guy like Scherzer's getting over a million dollars a start, and they're only going to let him go six innings at the most. Six innings, right? Yeah. And they yeah, all so have what, 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 what a life. Three they all have to six throw innings yeah. a quality start. Now they quality, yeah, quality start is five innings. That's that's yeah, crazy. So quality in start is four point five ERA. That's terrible. Wow. Well, the DH and the ERAs are going to go up if you have the DH. Yeah, you're right. If you if you haven't read it, read the history of baseball in ten pitches. Yeah. Yes. I have a, that's a that was that, that is a great book, 
And when he talks about the fastball, he talks about exactly what we're talking about. Well, Mike, he was one of our speakers at the, the hot stovers. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, Tyler Kepner. His yeah, father. Tyler Kepner. His father is one of our members and he got us Tyler. And I just, I just, I'm, I'm reading now. It's a, it's a real quick read. Uh, if you want to read about a, a great game, uh, the greatest game ever pitched with um, between uh, Marischal and Warren Spahn that went 16 innings. 16 innings. Wow. And the only run that scored was a home run. I've got, I've got a picture of Willie Mays hitting his first home run up here, a painting behind me. Um, and he hit his first big league home run off of Warren Spahn. Well, he happened to be the guy in that game who hit the home run off Warren Spahn to win the game for Marischal. But it's a, it's a, it's a fun book to read, and, and it makes you realize, boy, do I, miss, do I miss guys who could go 9, 10, or 11 innings. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was yeah I, I saw Juan Marischal pitch a game against the Phillies, uh -huh. where he pitched a complete game. He gave up 12 hits, wow. one run. One, really? One run or 12 hits. And I, I couldn't believe that. I thought the, every time he had people on base, he would strike somebody out. He'd get a double play. He just pitched. And, you know, Marisol, he could throw. I mean, he could throw. He could throw hard, but he knew how to pitch. Can you imagine anybody, like, a one-run game, complete game, 12 hits? Complete it. Now, those are, the, those are the days that, you know, those of us who were around to see those guys pitch, whether it was television or in person, we were, we were in for a treat. That was, the best, that was the best time of baseball. I could imagine Aaron, Aaron Nola, 12 hits and 15 runs. <laughs> <laughs> and six home runs. Hey, yeah. <laughs> What I like about Lou, my old classmate, is when he gets down on a player, he goes way down. <laughs> I'm a total. If Noah, if, if Noah starts the season seven and zero and about a two point two four ERA, Lou will be saying, "What the? It's about time." <laughs> I, I was gonna, I was gonna jump in and defend Lou and say for twelve innings, Noah would have to go for four starts. I think. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> But seven zero at the beginning of the season, I'd say he'd wind up seven and fourteen. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, you, all of you should know out there that Lou is one of those rare combinations in baseball, like Ricky Henderson, who Lou threw left-handed and batted right-handed. You don't yeah. have many guys who do that. I mean, no, I think I think, uh, I think there are pitchers out there like. Uh, um, you know, you have Syndergaard, you have DeGrom, and, and Zach Wheeler. I think they all, the, all three of them do it wrong as far as hitting. They're all right-handed pitchers, but they're all left-handed hitters. And I don't know for the life of me why a pitcher would want to expose his pitching arm uh, to the pitcher when he's batting. And Sandy Koufax is the same way. He's a left-handed thrower, right-handed hitter. Expose that left arm, you know, to, the, to, to get hit. I never understood that. Yeah, I, I growing up, I throw right, that left. And that's yeah. very common. That's common, but Lou, yeah, Lou had it the yeah, other way around. The other way around. Yeah. But I wonder why that's more common. That's interesting. Why throwing right, batting left is more common than the opposite way around, throwing left and batting right. I think it has to do with your dominant eye. You, you, everybody has a, a is either left or right eye dominant too, and I think if you're if you bat left handed. You, you, you see the pitch first with your right eye. So but I think I, my son's the same way. My son was a good baseball player. And he throws right, bats left. Right. Somebody told me that that's the way you should bat, the opposite of the way you throw, because your power hand is on the bottom. Right. So if you throw right, bat, left, your power hand's on the bottom. You're, you did the opposite, your power hand, your left hand was on the bottom. That yeah, makes sense. Too. I tried left-handed but it will always seem very very awkward to me Lou were you going to do something that uh, somebody's going to win, win one of your books oh yeah uh, well make that the next trivia question <laughs> what, what's the name of the book yeah who, who wrote this book <laughs> oh um Right Lou, wrote, Lou wrote the section on bats. He wrote the chapter on bats. The book is called The Essentials of Professional Baseball, Balls, Bats, and More. 
And there's a chapter on bats, balls, bases, uniforms, all the things that go into making a major league game. Uh, kind of interesting. Uh, the scorecard, uh, the music, the umpire replays, video uh, coaching, um, trucking the uniforms to Florida. It's kind of interesting. It's, it's about 20 pages long. So, all right, here's the, uh, here's the big question. Which player with a last name beginning with E hit the most home runs? <clears throat> a, Dwight Evans. B, Jim Edmonds. C, Edwin Encarnacion. Or D, Daryl Evans. That's a it's tough a one. <clears throat> that is a tough one. Encarnacion, he said a lot of home runs. Well, you're half right. Well, that would not be unusual. <laughs> half right. Yeah, I would gotta say, get you got a guess in the uh, chat uh, of Edmonds. I would say Edmonds. Nope. I was I was gonna say uh, Daryl yeah. Evans. Yeah, you, you say Evans, and we got a fifth, you know, 50 50 chance. Daryl Evans. Yeah, I think Daryl Evans. Daryl Evans had forty six or forty seven home runs one year, something like that. Yeah, when he was older, near the end of his career. Well, we have a dilemma because C and D, Ed, uh, Edwin Encarnacion and Daryl Evans D are the right answer. So there were two uh, answers. I don't know how to cut the book in half though. <laughs> Sharon, uh, as Kathy said, what's the name of the book? I said it. Essentials of Professional Baseball, Balls, Bats, and More. I don't know if you can see that, but it, can you see it here? Yeah, move, move it, it over a little bit. Move, move it to the left. I have a copy. There you go. There you go. Okay. Somewhere over there. Well, I think both of us have a copy who, who said Inquinarcion and, um, and Evan. So who's the next person up? The next person up, what do you mean? Next well, who, who was... Uh, who would have come in? Who 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 also said those names? Uh, uh, Kimberly Cook. Kimberly Cook in the chat said Edmonds. All right. Okay. Uh, if Kimberly can send me your address, I'll mail the book to her. You can email. That. I'm sorry. What? I thought that was the wrong answer. You uh, said yeah, you said Errol Evans was one one answer, and who was the other one? Edmund. Carcion. 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 I thought he said it in Carcion. Yeah. Who's, yeah, who said it in Carcion? Oh, I... Lou, what were the answers again? The answers were Ed, Edwin Encarnacion and Daryl Evans. Oh, Evans. Okay. Yeah. See, I, never, I mind, never mind, Kimberly. Never mind. Oh, Sorry about that. Yeah, Kimberly. Well, I'll send it to her anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You might, might be the only one on the chat that doesn't have it. <laughs> um, Zoom. Kimberly? I, read a, I read a great book this past summer. Um, it was written by a Chicago sports writer that was about the Phillies and Cubs 23 to 22 game. Oh, yeah. It went well. inning by inning, and then it had yes. uh, profiles on different uh, players in the game. I, they had a great profile on Bob Boone and his family. But the book was just a hoop to read. It was really fun. That is a fun book. Yeah. yeah. I also, if you're speaking of odd and unusual baseball books, the 33 inning game. Have you ever read that book? Yes. Against yeah, the Paul Sox. Paul Sox. Paul Sox. That's a great yet he, he had future Hall of Famers Ripken and Boggs who played in that game. Opposite. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. Uh, Kimberly, if you would send me your address, I'll give you my email, and if you could email your mailing address, I'll be happy to. Uh, mail this. You put it in the chat, Lou, if you can see that. Put it in the chat. Yeah. My husband will appreciate it. The, ba the baseball room is mainly his. Why? Well, uh, <laughs> I've added to it in nice ways. Did, uh, is it time for anybody to show their favorite memorabilia? Yeah. Or are we out of time, Mark? Yeah, but I Mark? think, it, yeah, we need to move on to that. Yes, that'd be great. All right, who brought their. Favorite memorabilia with him? Oh, God. 
Um, I've got my picture of Mandelbrot. This painting that was there were two done. Um, by an artist in Philadelphia whose last name is Stango. When I was with the uh, Clear Trading Card Company, we did a set of cards uh, with permission of the uh, Mantle family a year after Mickey passed <clears throat> called Monumental, Mo Monumental Moment Moments. And I know uh, Mike, Mike Pike has a, has a set of those. And um, we commissioned him to do two paintings. Uh, the first painting hung uh, or did hang in Mickey Mantle's restaurant up there on, uh, I think, South Central Park. And of course, that, it's not open anymore. So I don't know who has the painting now. And I was fortunate enough, enough to receive this copy because when Clear closed in 2005, um, our last day there, uh, they didn't give us severance. They gave us nothing. So uh, I asked if I, this painting was hanging outside my office. So I asked if I could have it as my severance. And they said, yes. So, um, this is, uh, you can see it, it's, you know, it's big. Oh. And it's, uh, it reminds you a lot of what Leroy Neiman used to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, better. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, that's my treasure piece of baseball memorabilia. That's really neat. It's very nice. I'm not a memorabilia person. I have some signed baseballs. The one I have that's uh, signed by Aaron Nola, I'm going to save for Lou. <laughs> and shame. where were you sitting when you caught that home run <laughs> <laughs> very good <laughs> no, he signed that personally i i uh i was at a, a thing at the phillies and he's i guess was, i had baseball for him to sign i've got my like, a-rod signed glove from i got in reading that was a pretty good one yeah, I'll yeah he, when he was there with uh, rehabbing with trenton that's right i remember I, that game can't seem to get the picture and then somewhere i don't know where the 1980 phillies ball is but you know okay. my schmitty's on it and so it's the tugger oh that's cool i don't know where that is my i said my husband we have looking we have so many and we the last time i went to spring training was when the nationals won because he's from okay. dc so we have a fun uh washington philadelphia rivalry including the capitals stuff like yeah. that yeah oh yeah so, I have, I have dual allegiances because I lived in Washington for 16 years also, but I grew up in the Phil you know, Montgomery County. So it was always the Phillies first. Here's the NOLA ball, Lou. <laughs> that looks like an egg. <laughs> you should tell me about my, One of my favorite bobbleheads is with Aaron NOLA from the Iron Pigs when he's wearing his Mardi Gras uh, thing. Uh -huh. That made the bathroom. I've got stuff in the bathroom. Oh, wow. That's a great place for it to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's where my Richie and uh, Harry bobblehead is and stuff like that. I, that only have, I, only have, I only have one autograph, and I bet I'm the only person in the group that has an autograph of Johnny Walkenfuss. So. John Walkenfuss. Oh, that's a great wow. name. John Walkenfuss. The old Detroit Tiger with the, uh, the, the he had that uh, handlebar mustache, right? Or... He had the goofy batting stance, too, if you remember him. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I like his name. Yeah. <laughs> He was uh, he was from Wilmington, Delaware. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his his name's almost as fun as uh, the one John Bacabella. Yeah, another another former catcher. I like Jared Saltalamacchia because you oh, couldn't yeah. get his name on the back of the jersey. Yeah, just like Concepcion, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, th I think that's the the longest name in baseball history is Saltalamacchia. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, Kimberly, I I just put my email address in the chat. So if he's asking you to send me your mailing address and I'll send you the book. Okay. Another great ball, a Chase Utley ball that uh, oh. Sean Rod threw to us at batting practice one day. What did That's he write? World F and Champions on there? <laughs> <laughs> that made the bathroom too. That made the bathroom. That made the bathroom. That, made the bathroom. that was appropriate. That <laughs> no, not Sean Rodriguez, the ball, the Chase Utley ball. <laughs> Julian and, uh, and Lou will remember uh, uh, Fred Schultz, my son's father in law, who, who comes to the hot stoves. He's in Florida. That's probably why he's not doing this. But he has a baseball room. He has more Phillies memorabilia than anybody I've ever seen. Wow. And he, he has a friend who has even more. He has signed jerseys, bats. He has 300 signed baseballs. He's got 
he had a he had a um, uh, a Life magazine cover of Joe DiMaggio. He had two of them signed. Wow! And he gave one to uh, my daughter in law's school when she was in high school, and they they uh, chanced it off at an auction for like five thousand dollars. It's wow! He's got Very an amazing nice. collection of stuff. It's amazing. So it's too bad he's not here tonight. I'm sure he has. Mike, Mike, what about some of your baseball cards? Any, anything? Well, um, I have a lot of memorabilia, and I was looking in my iPhotos for a photo of my man cave. But uh, you know, I've got a, I've got a Chase Utley and a Jimmy Rollins game used bat signed by the both of them, and you know, a uh, Hank Aaron bat and things like that. But my major focus is on cards, and I like the history of the baseball. And um, probably my favorite uh, baseball game my favorite is this one. And you can't see it. Um, it's a it's a it's a 19th century. It's an 18 1887 baseball card of Ed Delahanty. Oh wow! wow. And wow. Um, it it's probably Ed Delahanty had fewer than a dozen baseball cards. Um, he was the guy that uh, perished when he fell uh, over the Niagara Falls in 1903. You know, he was a hopeless alcoholic, um, a very tragic guy. But one of the few guys in Major League Baseball to hit over 400 three times. Wow. Uh, and he was on the Phillies team that had four players that hit 400 okay. um, in one year. Um, just a great I mean, he was the first superstar in baseball. Uh, I mean, really superstar. And, um, you know, this this baseball card of him that I own is one of my prized possessions. That's great. That's cool. He's one of the really, really great old-time players. And when they talk about great Phillies yeah. players, they never mention him. Yeah. No. And in fact, if you, if you know that new book called Baseball 100 Players or I, I forget the name of it. I've asked for it for Christmas. Um, <laughs> he's not even mentioned. Really? Yeah. His lifetime batting average was like 340 or something. 340. Oh, he, he has, I think, the second highest lifetime batting average in baseball. I mean, he was just an incredible player. But, you know, he was an alcoholic. He would, um, uh, there was a great book about him that I reviewed for the Philadelphia Inquirer a number of years ago that talks about the fact that he was manipulated by his owners. John McGraw was just a horrible guy. Um, and they would pay people like Delahanty ahead of the season. And in Delahanty's case, he would take the money and he'd follow the horses to Florida. And he'd live this big life and you know lose lots of money gambling and this, that, and the other. And then basically have nothing. What was the name of that book? I think I have it. Uh, it's called something like Ed, Ed Delahanty and uh, Emerald Green or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, I have that book. And you know, that's, I don't it's really like collect Jerry much. Casway, Gerald Casway. Jerry I have Casway. that. It's a good book. It's a good book. It's a terrific history, not only of, of Delahanty, but of that period where um, Irish ball players changed baseball. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't collect much in the way of uh, artifacts, but I have a lot of. I have probably three hundred books on baseball, and yeah. yeah, slightly more books than I have on Shakespeare. And as a former English teacher, that's sort of embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I'm a former English teacher too, as Kathy <laughs> will tell you. And uh, I have very few books left on Shakespeare. No, I have. I have, a, <laughs> I have a, at least a shelf full. Oh, yeah. Wasn't he a shortstop for the old Brooklyn Dodgers? He was. He was. He was. That's it. <laughs> there was actually a running back for Notre Dame back in the twenties named Bill Shakespeare. There was. Where did you guys teach English? I taught at LaSalle High School mostly. Oh, okay. Okay. I went to Harrington. Oh, we know Harrington. I used to live yeah. out that way. Yeah. Mike, you you were Westchester, right? You were Westchester. I taught at Westchester University. Kathy 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 Boyer's. Um, uh, alma mater. That's right. Yeah. Dr. D'Angelo was my English teacher at Archbishop Kennedy High School in Conshohocken. 
Yes, yeah, so I had a brief. <laughs> I had a brief stay, and Mark was one of the highlights of my <laughs> my brief stay at the Archbishop Kennedy. <laughs> Mark still, uh, uh, Mark still owes him a term paper, though. <laughs> <laughs> so his grade is incomplete. On Wallace Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> he still can't get over that. I can't. Yeah. I, did I have you in a, AP English? Was it AP English? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Wow. I remember those kids. They were smart kids. I wrote letters for them and everything. <laughs> That's and, why and, they and, were in AP. AP. That's why and, I was in AP yeah. English. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we need to thank everybody, Lou, for uh, showing up tonight. This is big fun. Yeah. yeah. Really good discussion. Lots of free will, freewheeling stuff. A lot of fun. From, from just about every angle. Yeah. 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 Well, thank By you, the way, Julian. So just if we have a baseball ahead. season, uh, Mark, on time, maybe we can do a spring training version. Okay. And yeah. hopefully yeah. Li live and in fun. person at the library again. Yes, uh, that'd be great if we could be in person. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, thanks for, for those of you. Phillies just announced their um, selling tickets, group, group tickets. I think. Group tickets. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, they want to get the money in the bank before the, the owners lock them out. <laughs> yeah, Middleton needs to. Did you ever think wow. about doing that as a group? That's an idea. He could, yeah. or, or either that, or go to Reading. I, I have good contacts at Reading that we can uh, we can get some pretty good seats in Reading. I love that ballpark. I go there at least once a year and see a game. Love it. Yeah, there. we've uh, lately, like this past year, we had a group and we sat in the third base picnic area and, and had had big fun. Yeah. yeah. That's a nice. That's a nice outing. Really is. Yeah. We, we we get tickets and uh, includes a buffet, and it's really reasonable. It's like twenty three, twenty four dollars. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. Great. So we'll put. Yeah, we can put something together next summer. Sounds great. Yep, for that. Great. All right. All right, everybody. Well, thank, you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great. 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 Great.